What do you see under the hood of this market that makes you a little <laughs> bullish in the nearer or longer term? Well, I love being a contrarian, Brian. There's nothing that warms my heart than seeing investors nervous. Um, and that's really been the story. And you know, I've been on your show for the last two years. It's just that that sentiment has never really gotten that bullish. And you're seeing really negative sentiment that goes back to like what it was in July of 2020. That's right after we had the pandemic, obviously, and we had stocks sell off like 40 percent. So obviously investors were jittery. But we're seeing the same thing right now. And to me, it's juxtaposed against an economy that looks pretty hot. I mean, let's face it, the labor market's on fire, Brian. Um, you know, we saw 467,000 jobs created on Friday. That was way, way more than was expected. Um, we're seeing, you know, wages are going up significantly. But I also think what was really remarkable uh, in the news on Friday was that productivity report. We had productivity go up 6.6%, which means companies are becoming more efficient because this labor shortage can be a big problem for a long time. It's no secret. So companies have to figure out ways to invest in automation, you know, technology. You know, I could see yeah. a day where we have this trucker shortage, right? We could be have automation of trucks. I mean, it's all coming down the pipeline. Fair enough. But as we know, and as you know, the economy and the stock market are not the same thing. They're different things. And yes, the economy is doing well, but the stock market is facing higher inflation, higher rates. Maybe a lot of the you know retail traders who got burned in the dropout this year dropping out entirely. Ryan, how do we square the economy and the market? That's a great point, Brian. And I think it's more the tale of two markets, right? Because as rates are going higher, and they're definitely going higher here, inflation's real. The Fed didn't tell you the truth, and you've seen growth stocks take a significant hit here at the beginning of the year. You just mentioned Kathy Woods; her funds down 50 percent from its high. Um, you mentioned Peloton this morning, which is really just like a glorified Nordic, Nordic track. Uh, that's down huge here. Um, but on the other hand, value stocks have held up well here, right? I mean, value is barely down for the year. And if you look at your traditional inflation hedges, you know, we've mentioned energy on your show a lot in the past. Uh, energy stocks are going through the roof right now. If you look at commodities in general, commodities historically are a tremendous inflation hedge. Uh, they're up for the year. So I think you know, it's important here that you transition your portfolio if you haven't done it already. Clearly, growth stocks don't do well when you have inflation going up. But more cyclical stocks that are more sensitive to the economy do very, very well. And we have a very euphoric consumer. We're coming into a time now where people are like, forget the virus. I'm going to go out. I'm going to live. That's going to bode very, very well for stocks that are most sensitive to the economy.